Okay, and we'll uh, we'll get started here. Um, all right. So um, today I am. We're going to just take a look at one chapter from this book. This book is called Fluent Python. It is a, a really thick book. Okay, compared to the other book, the other book uh, I don't have it with me, but the other book was like way thinner. It was like this this big. No, that was the Think Python book. Fluent Python is super fat. It's uh, 700 something pages, I think. Uh, Think Python was maybe 200 or so. Um, and I hope you enjoyed Think Python. It, I thought it, I think it's a really good intro text to the Python language. Um, once you have a handle on the introductory concepts of Python, then uh, you can start looking at more intermediate, advanced concepts of Fluent Python. Don't, don't pick this up until you feel real comfortable with the early stuff, but I just want to kind of show from the first chapter, this, uh, this textbook shows some really cool stuff. And so uh, that's what we'll do today. We'll just take a look at the uh, kind of parts from the first chapter. And, uh, and I, uh, I am not sure how long our lecture will take, so we'll see. And, um, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, okay. So you can access the, uh, the textbook if you are connected to the UCLA network um, from Safari Books Online. Also, if you, you know, search, I'm sure there are ways to find uh, not legal versions, but, uh, but things out on the internet. But, uh, but this, this is, uh, you can read the licensed legal version from your browser because UCLA pays for a subscription to read all of these books and, uh, and you have access to that. So, um, uh, sorry, give me a second here. Okay, um, all right, so how do you access? Okay, so what you need is you need to connect to the UCLA VPN. So um, everybody everybody should have, uh, you just type in UCLA VPN, okay? And this, uh, the IT center at UCLA will have instructions on how to connect to the VPN via whatever operating system you have. And so you can do it on your phone or on your computer, um, uh, basically. Um, so, you know, I don't, um, the VPN, the UCLA VPN, this is why we have, for, I'm, I'm thinking this is why we have dual factor authentication. I know everybody kind of hates um, Duo and all of this stuff. But one of the reasons why is because when you uh, log on from a UCLA ISP, uh, or not UCLA, uh, v, uh, IP address, right? So if you have, if your IP address says you're coming from UCLA, um, a lot of uh, websites have, um, will just give you like, say, oh, you're cool, and then they'll let you in. So, um, you know, all of these, um, so this Safari Books Online says, oh, you're from UCLA? Sure, you're in, we'll let you read all of our books for free. Uh, a lot of medical or just journals, academic journals, medical journals, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you just go there and you say, hey, I'm from UCLA. Uh, and they'll see, look at your IP and then say, oh yeah, you can read all of our books or all of our articles, um, which, which is a huge, huge benefit. Um, and then, but if, uh, you know, if you're a regular random stranger, you don't, you don't get that advantage. So anyway, uh, being part of the UCLA network is, uh, it's fairly uh, high security stuff, and I don't know, uh, I guess other reasons for multi-factor authentication. I'm a big fan, but I know it's a little inconvenient to have that, but, um, but anyway, okay. So uh, what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, define another class uh, to show a deck of cards, okay? And we've already done this. We've already created a class that will define a deck of cards. But this one, um, we are going to implement a couple special methods, okay? Uh, a get item and length, 
And just the implementation of those two special methods will uh, suddenly make our, um, uh, our class definition you know, fairly, fairly useful, okay? And, uh, and so before we get into that, uh, let me talk about named tuples, okay? Named tuples uh, are basically a shortcut for defining a very simple class, okay? So, uh, for example, um, we earlier created a named tuple, uh, not a named tuple, we created a class called point, and class point has two attributes, x and y, and then we gave it a method to present itself as a string, okay? And so, so we called, uh, so this is how we defined it. We said class point, and then we created the initialization method, uh, which will by default take x, set x and y to zero and then sets the self attributes to those things. All right, and so here I can create p, which is uh, an instance of the point class, and then we can print out p and we get zero, zero, okay? So, um, you can create basically the equivalent class here, okay, um, as a named tuple, because this is a very simple class. Really, it just contains, it's a, it's a class that has two attributes. And, uh, and basically, these two attributes can be uh, expressed as a tuple. And so you can create something called a named tuple. And this comes from the module collection. So you first have to import collections. And then all we do is we do collections.namedTuple. We give it the, uh, the name of the, the, the class here and, uh, and here. And um, so this is by convention, these are the same. And then um, you, give, uh, you give it the names of the attributes that you want to uh, keep track of. So, uh, so here I define my point class. And we can say, well, what is point? Point is class point, OK? Very similar to what's up here. Uh, but again, we didn't have to write all of this. We just we just called names tuple. And now, uh, let's say I want to create a new point. I call point one two, and this creates a point. When you print it out, it comes out in named tuple form, which will be you've got a point instance of the point class, which is going to be x equals one and y equals two, uh, just like I passed it. And you can access any of the attributes like this, p dot x is one, okay? And now here's the key difference is that with a named tuple, okay, unlike these mutable classes where we could just uh, set the attributes, okay, you cannot, you cannot set the attribute here. You have to, if you try to do, if you do assignment here, okay, if you try to say p dot x is three, um, you can't do that, all right? You want, you have to, once you define um, the attributes when you create the instance of that named tuple, then let, you know, as a tuple is immutable, the, uh, the class object is also immutable, okay? So, so there you go, okay. Um, if you need, uh, to make so the named tuple basically is, is a way for you to store attributes in as a tuple in tuple form, and uh, and if you need to do something um, more complicated, okay, like you want your own special methods, then you'll have to kind of create a new class and maybe you can have it inherit from a named tuple. So that's that's allowed, but um, but being um, uh, but if you use named tuple itself, uh, it's just going to be a way to kind of store, store the attributes. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use named tuple to create a class for cards, okay? And so, so the cards basically for, you know, standard deck, you've got the rank and you have the suit. And so those will be basically the two attributes that we are going to, um, to store. And so we'll create a uh, named tuple called card with rank and suit. And then here we'll create a test card. Uh, and this will be the seven of diamonds. And so when I call for seven of diamonds, it says, yep, this is card class. The rank is seven, the suit is diamonds. Okay, so no, uh, no surprise there. It's just, this is just a shortcut for creating um, a simple class, okay? 
and and you'll see this quite frequently. You'll often just see names tuples uh, here and there uh, in other people's code when when they want simple um, simple classes here. Okay, and so now that we have that, we can create a class for a standard deck of 52 cards. All right, and so there's a lot going on in this um, in this definition. Here we define a class called a French deck, which is basically our standard 52 card deck that everyone's familiar with, and um, and and we start off by creating some class attributes, right? Class attributes, ranks, and suits. So this is something that is defined for the uh, the uh, this is defined for the uh, the entire class. All all instances of the class will share these attributes. Okay, and uh, and so we take advantage of a lot of kind of these Python built-in functions, right? So this is. This is we'd start to get into what we call Pythonic code, uh, which is you know start starting to be uh, you know elegant. Maybe that's uh, <laughs> too um, presumptuous of a word here, but uh, but but nice things here. Okay, so here what do we have? We've got a um, list comprehension, right? Uh, and basically we we start off with a range object. Okay, that starts with uh, range two through eleven. So that's uh, numbers two up through ten, okay, because uh, eleven is not inclusive. So we go range uh, two through ten, and then we make a list, okay. So for n in range two to eleven, uh, we make a the string representation of each of these numbers, and we throw those into a list, okay. So we get a list here, and then um, and then if you take a a string and you just say make a list out of that. Uh, it's automatically going to parse it into um, list elements. And then with the plus, we are concatenating the lists. And so this whole thing um, is just a quick way to basically create the strings 2, 3, 4, all the way up through 10, then jack, queen, king, ace. Okay, So that, um, that creates the, uh, the list. Here we've got suits, uh, spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs, separated by spaces. And then we call split um, the string method dot split on the string, and what that's going to do is it's going to split up the spaces, and it's going to make a list with spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. Okay. Now, now one could argue that it's easier to just go ahead and write the um, <laughs> write the list like this, and surely this is easier to um, to kind of translate. But there's also just something nice about being able to take a string, call split on it, and make a make a list out of the words in that string, right? Make a list out of the uh, the elements that are separated by spaces. Okay, and then uh, when we initialize a French deck, meaning we create a new instance of the French deck, then um, what we will do is we use another list comprehension. Okay, and in this list comprehension, we have two for loops, okay? So basically, it's gonna go for every rank in the ranks, okay? And we're gonna also do it for every suit and suits. So so the, uh, so it's basically uh, nested for loops, okay? And, um, and we're going to basically create a, a list comprehension, okay? Uh, where the expression that we're saving is card rank comma suit, okay? For each, you know, suit and suit and rank and ranks. Okay, so we we use this, and um, and 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 we have that. Okay, so uh, so that's going to create a list called self underscore cards. Okay, so uh, underscore cards here will create a list um, of basically all. Uh, Four by thirteen combinations, so all fifty-two combinations here. Okay, all right, and then we implement two special methods. Okay, and these seem very self-explanatory, but the use of these special methods will unlock a lot of, uh, for for lack of a better word, Pythonic power. Okay, so uh, so these two special methods will unlock um, the like just a lot of core features in Python. 
So one is uh, underscore length, which will return the, the length of the kind of when we ask, what is the length of a French deck? The thing that we're going to be talking about is going to be this list cards. Um, so technically, uh, you know, you, we could imagine a, a class that has uh, multiple attributes and maybe s multiple of the attributes are lists and things like that. And we say, well, when you talk about the length of the deck, what are you talking about? We're talking about the length of this list, which right now is going to be 52, okay, which is 52. Okay? And then we create a uh, another special method called get item, okay? And then so uh, the idea here is if you subset, if you subset a deck, a uh, French deck instance, right? So if we create an instance of the deck and if we subset it with an index, should it return a value? Should it return an item, okay? And the answer is yes. What do we want it to return? We want it to return, okay, because get item takes in uh, an additional argument called position. What do we want it to return? We want it to return the item, okay, stored in underscore cards position, okay? All right, so there's not a lot of code, okay? There's very few lines here, but there's quite a bit being packed in there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and implement that. So, so we're gonna run this, and now we create an instance of the French deck. So all of this text just, I think, I think I've tried to explain it, okay? Um, uh, so let, let me just show you. So, so here we create uh, an instance of deck, Okay, of the French deck called deck. All right. All right. So actually, I can do uh, this. I can just call what is the length on deck, right? Length of deck is 52, right? So when we say, well, what is the length of this? Y you could imagine there would be, uh, there could be other attributes in French deck. What are we talking about when we talk about the length of the deck? Okay, we're talking about the length of, of self underscore cards. So when we call length, this is what we want. Okay. And then, um, and you know, this, why is this important? Well, certain, um, certain things like iterations, like if we want something to be iterable, we need to have this underscore length um, uh, special method uh, implemented, okay? And then with the get item uh, method implemented, we can now perform subsetting. So I can say in deck, what is index zero, okay? What is index zero? It is going to be um, the first item in uh, self cards, okay, which is going to be um, the card, the two of spades here, okay. Uh, and you can do um, basically um, any kind of subsetting here. We can call what's the last item. The last item is going to be the ace of clubs in uh, when we uh, create our deck, okay. Um, and and there's quite a few um, functions in the regular Python library that uh, takes, uh, makes use of basically square brackets, okay? So, so one of these is the um, random.choice function, right? So from the random module, we can import um, the choice function, right? And basically what this does, is it takes uh, any kind of collection and it's going to randomly select one of these things, right? And, and basically it's implementing, it takes uh, the way random choice works is it says, oh, okay, it looks at the length and says, well, how many items are there to choose from? And it says, oh, there's 52. Okay, well then I'm going to pick a random integer from zero to, zero to 51, which will be the indexes, indices, and I'm going to choose one, uh, that random integer, right? So the, Picking a random card is not hard. It's, you can, you can do, uh, you know, give me a random integer from zero to 51, and then from there uh, randomly, uh, and then select the item in that position, okay? But choice automatically implements it in, in, in that fashion. And so you can just run choice on deck and it gives us a random card. I run it again, it gives me a different card, eight of hearts, and I run it again here, it gives me the ace of spades, and so on and so forth. Uh, this takes advantage, okay, this choice um, can be used because I've implemented length, which tells me, uh, which tells choice how many items there are to choose from, and then get item tells it how to select one individual value, 
from there, right? And so just using these two, implementing these two special methods, now I can take advantage of this, okay? Um, get item basically implements pretty much all of the, um, the functionality of the square brackets. So we can also, uh, this thing automatically supports slicing, okay? So I can say, all right, give me the first three items in our deck, okay? So we do deck colon three, um, two, and it gives us, you know, two, three, four of spades, okay? Uh, what will this do? Zero, 13, two. <laughs> Dog, what's going on there? Oh, he's trapped. <laughs> My dog got trapped behind the chair. <laughs> um, okay. He's fine. <laughs> he's old. He's 13. Um, okay. So We've got uh, 0, 13, colon 2. What's that going to do? That's going to go from 0 to 13 uh, every other card, right, uh, in steps of 2. So that's going to give me 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, queen, ace, okay, eight, yeah, uh, of spades. Here, what will this do? The 12th is going to be index 12 is the ace, okay, index 12. What's wrong, dog? What's wrong? He's okay. Uh, so index 12 is the ace. Here we're gonna say go all the way to the end, picking every 13th card after that. So that's gonna give us all four aces. Okay, so there we go. Okay, um, get item also makes our class, um, class iterable, okay? So all of these things that you know, we would expect these kinds of behaviors to exist in a list. Basically, we get pretty much like list functionality straight out of this new class that we've implemented um, because we've uh, implemented these two special methods, okay? All right, so here um, we can also make it iterable, all right? So you can do a uh, card and deck, print card, and boom, and prints all 52 cards, starting with the two of spades, going through the ace of clubs, okay? Uh, you can also say, you know, reverse the deck and print it out, and so it'll, you know, print, does it in reverse order, okay? Um, we also can run uh, the in, uh, function, okay, which is, uh, so, so there is a special method called contains, which um, you can implement, and that will, um, that, that will get used for the in operator, but if contains is not implemented, then, um, then in will work uh, for anything that is iterable, it's just going to go sequentially, so it's going to kind of look through this, it's going to basically uh, look through each element in here and search for a certain thing. So we can say, you know, is the card queen of hearts in the deck? And that returns true. Is the card seven of beasts in the deck? And that returns false. That does not exist. Okay. All right. So, um, I don't know. This is, uh, this is neat, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, what if we wanted to sort the deck, right? What if we wanted to sort the deck here? Um, we have it kind of sorted, uh, just the, uh, the cards get implemented in this way. Um, but what if we wanted to, um, to sort them in a particular way? So here, what if we say all the aces get ranked first, then all of the kings, then all the queens, so on and so forth, uh, down to the twos, okay? Well, what we can do is we can create a function called spades high. And what this function will do is it's going to return um, a value from 0 to 51. Okay, it's going to assign each card a value. And, uh, and so what it's going to, uh, so the way we're going to do this is we are going to take the, um, the card and we're gonna ask for uh, 
the rank value, okay? All right, which we take the uh, card.rank, okay? And we ask, ask what is the index of that card rank in the uh, French, deck, French deck ranks um, list, okay? So we have the, um, um, so we have, so we have this list, right? And so if we, if we get a card and we say, okay, this card is a king, it's going to give us back the index of this, of this card, which will be, uh, in this case, it'll be index 11, okay? So, um, so going back to here, uh, the rank value will be 11, okay? All right, now how, uh, so how can we make this unique for each thing? What we can do is we can take each rank value and multiply it basically by four. So if, uh, if you get a two, the rank value, the, the index for the two is zero. So it's gonna be zero times four, which will be zero. And then we'll add, we'll add uh, from the suit values, <laughs> the values of each thing. Sorry, let me, let me just check on my dog here, okay? All right, I think he's fine. I don't know what's going on. He normally doesn't bark without reason, so. <laughs> I, think, I, I think he's okay, I think he's okay. I just, I, uh, I, get, uh, I get a little bit worried when he's barking, because normally he doesn't bark without reason, so usually if he's barking, something is not quite right, but he's, he seems okay, I don't know. All right, <laughs> I'll show you. Or maybe I, I have I already shown you pictures of my dog. All right. Anyway, um, okay. So we've got uh, what is this? Oh yeah. Okay. So we have a, a dictionary that looks up basically uh, this. So so we've got the two of clubs. The rank value is zero, and then we add clubs, which is zero. The two of diamonds will be a rank value is zero times four, and this will be a plus one. Okay. If we get uh, an ace, okay, an ace, the rank value is 12, okay? So we do 12 times four, which will take me to 48. So the ace of clubs will be 48. The ace of diamonds will be uh, 12 times four, 48 plus one, 49. Going up to the ace of spades, which will be 12 times four, 48 plus three, which will be 51, okay? So this is gonna be a, a function that takes each card and returns a numeric value, okay? And then um, if we want to then sort it, we can use the sorted function, okay? And we can say, hey, sort the deck, and you are going to sort it using this function as a key, okay? So this will apply spades high to, the, um, to each card to get a value, and it's gonna sort the, uh, the deck according to that value. So starting at two of clubs, so we get two of clubs, two of diamonds, two of hearts, two of spades, all the way up to the ace of clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. All right, so, um, so you can do that. And again, um, all of this is possible because we've implemented those special methods. If, if we didn't implement those special methods, this is, this is not gonna work, okay? Um, Let's see, okay, um, for this part, so the special methods length and get item behaves like a standard Python sequence, okay, like uh, a list or something, okay, and we can uh, use random choice and reversed and sort and all of that stuff, okay. As we've implemented it so far, the deck cannot be shuffled, okay, because the deck is currently as it is, it is immutable, okay? 
Um, and if the only way we could kind of alter alter the uh, the list in cards here would be to directly mess with the cards attribute directly. Okay, and that kind of violates the principle of encapsulation. Encapsulation means you're supposed to really only interact with the um, the, the the class. Um, via its the the methods that are available to it, okay, or the uh, the functions that are available to it, and so um, if you want to be able to alter things inside a a class like this without uh, messing the um, messing with the attributes directly, uh, there is a special method called set item, okay. So um, so here let me just kind of show you um, as it is, right? If I try to use uh, the shuffle. Um, shuffle function from the random module okay here i can i can say all right here's let's look at the deck let's look at the first five cards okay there are two three four five six of spades and if i try to shuffle deck okay it tells me french deck does not support item assignment okay and the way shuffle works is if i just do um So here is x, and I can call shuffle on x, and and what what that does is it takes it takes this and it kind of reassigns all of the values inside here, okay, and and basically it, um, it you know it has to be kind of mutable. There needs to be a way to say all right into this position, put this number and things like that. Okay, so um, so what we can do is we can just implement a special method called set item. Okay, so set item takes in um, two additional arguments other than self. Okay, so we have self, key, and value, right? And then so what, we're, what we want to say is um, to set an item, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to set it, uh, set the item at this key location with this value. Okay. And so we're, what we want to refer to is we want to refer to the, um, the, uh, the list underscore cards here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, in the, uh, the, the position key at index key, um, set whatever, uh, set the item value to it, okay? And this will suddenly make this uh, kind of a revised version of the deck compatible with shuffle. So here is, okay, here's the first five cards of the deck. And here I can shuffle the deck. And now um, when I call deck, we can see the first five cards have been shuffled. Okay, we now have the five of spades, jack of diamonds, so on and so forth. I can call shuffle on it again, and we get uh, a different uh, different mix, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so so this was all implemented um, just by using set item. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of of these special methods available to us in what we, uh, what is known as the Python data Mo uh, model, okay, the data model as far as how should we store values uh, inside a class that we define, and so these are these are all we've done is implement special special methods here, but um, by doing that we get uh, access to a whole bunch of things. So so if you click the uh, the data data model, it gives you a whole bunch of stuff here, and um, so. Um, so what here we have is uh, it's under the section emulating container types, and uh, and these are different um, different some of the things here. So we got uh, object under double under length, object double under get item, and then here are some of the other things that you can do. Right, set item, delete item, missing, and they tell you kind of all of the um, the extra arguments that it would expect. Right, so delete item would be if you wanted to remove something. Out of the uh, um, out of the uh, the thing, you can do this, and it's going to uh, 
to uh, to delete it. So I think not just spitballing here, but if I I think if I tried to do pop on deck, it's not going to work, right? So uh, or let me see. Sorry, if I do deck. This, this is not going to work. I think, oh, I could be lying here. I think if I implement my delete item. Um, so we can't directly inherit from a list because uh, it's not quite a list. <laughs> um, so uh, in, in that, um, I don't know, let me see. Python inherit from list. Problem in inheriting. Okay, I'm going to have to read up on this. Two way dictionary. Something. All right. Um, I'll have to uh, look at what. Oh, now I'm now I'm nervous. I might have broken something here. Well, anyway, no better way to learn than try to just play around with something, right? So we got deck. Uh, let's kind of take a look here. All right, so let's try. Um, okay, let's get the, all right, let's try pop deck. No, it doesn't like it. All right, but I can do, I can run delete deck. Oh, I'm not, can't delete a literal. What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, I'm, I'm doing something wrong here. Okay, but anyway. Oh, delete, delete item. Well, all right. So, um, um, let me see. All right, but uh, but there's a whole bunch of these um, special methods, these double under methods that uh, that can be used, and uh, and it. Um, it allows, uh, it extends the uh, kind of functionality of whatever uh, objects that you are making. Okay, so anyway, this is uh, just a very brief introduction that, uh, and I probably won't spend uh, too much more time because uh, I think next week we're gonna start looking at pandas and a few more uh, data-centric things. Um, but I do highly recommend this, uh, this textbook, Fluent Python, as uh, if you're interested in becoming uh, you know more adept at, uh, at using Python in, uh, in different situations especially if you're going to be defining your own classes um, things like that so we'll um, so we'll call it there uh, for today and uh, and then yeah next week we'll start looking at um, at pandas and, uh, and um, working with uh, with data in, uh, in that context Oh, quiz answers. I always forget to do quiz answers. Okay, what should we do for today's quiz answers? Uh, give me, again, I'm going to have to write the, uh, the create the quiz. <laughs> um, uh, okay, what do we want? So let's, let's do um, letters will be uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. This out of this, this right. So we can do uh, choice letters A, and then um, 
B. Okay, so those will be our answers for today. Um, oops, shoot. Okay. Those answers. All right, A and D. Those will be our uh, answer choices for today. Let me um, uh, let me create that quiz for you guys. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, have a good weekend. Um, hope the uh, homework's coming along okay. And uh, we'll see you guys on Monday.